Hello, today we're going to talk about refraction. So we have three goals today. So we will define the index of refraction. Secondly, we'll talk about a simple model of refraction. And third, we'll go over Snell's law. And that's the equation we use for uh, refraction to doing, for doing some calculations. Of course, it would be nice to start with uh, what is refraction anyway? So generally when we talk about refraction, what we're re usually talking about is the change in direction that usually occurs when light passes from one medium to another. There are a couple of cases where you don't get a change in direction, but in general you do. And it turns out that this change in direction is associated with a change in the speed at which the light travels in the different media. And this is where the index of refraction comes in. So in a vacuum, an electromagnetic wave travels at a speed which we call c, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we're often going to be talking about light, but really anything we talk about today will apply to all electromagnetic waves. In any other medium but vacuum, light generally travels slower than C. And we characterize every medium by its index of refraction. So the speed of light, which we'll call V, in a material or a medium, depends on the index of refraction, or maybe conversely, the index of refraction depends on the speed of light, whichever way you want to look at it. In any event, the index of refraction is a dimensionless ratio. It's the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. So here's our equation, index of refraction. So it's symbolized by m, and it's equal to c over v, and in general, C is going to be larger than V, and so therefore we expect N to be greater than or equal to 1 for all media. So vacuum has N equal to 1 exactly, and air is just slightly higher than 1. In fact, it's so close to 1 that we'll just call it 1 usually. And then we've got uh, other media, glass, water, things like that, will have values higher than 1. Okay, so here we're, we've got a, uh, a beam of light shining down on an air glass interface. So the glass is shown in blue, the air is shown in white. And these, there's these purple things in the beam, and those are what we call wave fronts. Those are kind of the peaks of the waves, if you want to speak of it like that. So you show three peaks in the wave, and the wave direction is also shown with the red arrow. Okay, so what happens when light travels from one medium to another? And this actually applies to any kind of wave. In fact, when any kind of wave experiences a change in medium, then the frequency is the one thing that remains the same. Out of frequency, speed, and wavelength, frequency stays the same. Okay, so the frequency is set by whatever is driving the, uh, the wave in the other medium, and that's the wave in the first medium. Okay, so the frequencies match from one medium to the next. But different media generally are characterized by different speeds. And then the wavelength is going to be given by V over the frequency. So if V is different and the frequency is the same, then the speed of the wavelength is also going to be different. Okay, so we did uh, define the index of refraction in terms of speeds, C over V. But you can also define it in terms of wavelength. Okay, so n is c over v, c is simply f lambda, v we can write as f times lambda prime, the wavelength in the second medium, and of course the f's are the same, so n therefore is wavelength in vacuum divided by wavelength in a different medium. Okay, so in this picture, what, what is going on? So you've got a beam coming in striking the interface and generally when it encounters the interface two things are going to happen one the wave is going to reflect back 
So we can see the wave reflecting back into the second medium. And then, and of course, the wavelength is still unchanged in, in the uh, air. And then the second thing that happens is that some light passes through into the, uh, the second medium, which is glass in this case. Okay, so you can see that the wave fronts are closer together in that second medium, in the glass, than they were in the air. They're exactly two units apart in the air, and they appear to be about one and a third units apart in the glass. Okay, and that is consistent again with the speed being less in the glass than it is in the air. You can also see that the speed is less, because in picture D, that wave has traveled a certain distance from the interface down into the glass. It's traveled a much further distance. The reflected part is traveling a much further distance in the air going back. Okay, so both those things are consistent with each other. In the glass, the speed is less. That makes the wavelength less. Frequency is still the same. Okay, so, and again, we're going to keep using our uh, ray model of light here when we're talking about refraction. And often we don't even bother with the wave fronts here. The wave fronts are these things in purple. Uh, usually we'll just draw rays like this, this red arrow, these various ray, red arrows here. Okay. And so one thing you notice in this particular case is, we'll go back and look at that, is that you notice that um, there's no change in direction. Okay. So this is one case where you don't experience a change in direction where you come in along perpendicular to the interface itself. And we have a name for that perpendicular, that's the normal. So this is a ray of light incident along the normal, so you don't get any change in direction in that case. Okay, here are some uh, sample vi values of the index of refraction. So as we talked about vacuum, the index of refraction is defined to be exactly one. Uh, water has an index of refraction of 4 thirds, 1.33. Okay, so that means the speed of light is three quarters of the value it is in vacuum, speed of light in water. That's 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Glass, we see the index of refraction is 1.5 or 3 halves of the vacuum value. And that means the speed of light in glass is two thirds of what it is in vacuum. By the way, this glass value really depends on what type of glass you have. So commonly glasses are around 1.5, but you can get other types of glass, which are 1.6, 1.7, things like that. Okay. Uh, this number for diamond, 2.4, you know that doesn't look like a very big number, but actually, index of refraction-wise, that value of 2.4 is really actually quite large. It's hard to find numbers that are bigger than that. So diamond has one of the largest indices of refraction that you can find, and therefore it's got one of the smallest speeds of light. 1.25 times 10 to the 8 meter per second, which of course is still blindingly fast, but quite a bit slower than light goes in vacuum. Okay, so we're going to look at it. Here's where we get to a simple model of light changing medium. What happens to light as it changes from one medium to another? And so we imagine looking down on a marching band. This marching band is marching at a steady speed across a paved parking lot. So this uh, like five lines of eight marchers. We're going to see that in a minute. And when they reach the edge of the parking lot, they keep going into something where they end up going slower. So maybe a field with lots of grass, or in this case, maybe it's a lake. The, the animation is going to look like it's going to go from the gray parking lot to a blue thing. So maybe that's some water, for instance. Who knows why they're marching through water, but that's all right. And so what happens in the first case we're going to start with, so the rows in the marching band are parallel to the interface, and the rows simply get closer together, and there's no change in direction, but there is a decrease in speed, and that causes them to get closer together. Okay, and this is like the wave fronts in the uh, beam of light. Okay, so the marchers are a certain distance apart, but then the first ones hit that slow medium first, the ones behind are still moving faster, and so you get this decrease in the wavelength. And this again is kind of a helicopter view of the marching band. Okay, so we're going to do a second look at that, but we're going to have it uh, have these the marchers come in not along the normal, but 
along some angle with respect some angle other than zero degrees with respect to the normal. Okay, so then we'll see what we get a change in direction. And this change in direction is associated with the change in speed. And this is what we call refraction in general. Okay, so what happens now is that marchers in a given row don't all hit the slow interface at the same time. Okay, so some of them hit the slow interface and slow down before other ones. And that gives you an associated bend, change in direction. So you still get the change in wavelength we saw before, and in addition to that, you get a change in wavelength causing from different parts of that wavefront reaching the slow medium before uh, another part, other parts. Okay, so the same thing happens with light. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Snell's Law. And Snell, if I remember correctly, was a, uh, a Dutch scientist who came up with this. Willebrod Snell. And so, as we talked about, when a ray of light encounters an interface between two media, two things happen. Some of the light reflects off the interface. Okay? And so the instant light is in air, comes in, hits the interface, it makes an angle of theta 1 with the normal. The normal is the dashed line there. And the reflected beam goes off, obeying the law of reflection. In other words, it also makes an angle theta 1 with the normal. Second thing that happens is that some of the light refracts into the second medium. The glass has a slower speed of light than air does, and so this bend is toward the normal, just as we saw with the marching bend. And of course that's associated with a decreased wavelength, a decreased speed. Okay, so you get a change in direction, all associated with this decrease in speed in the second medium. Okay, so we have, we can actually specify a, um, an equation for this. This is what Snell came up with. So Snell says that the index of refraction, the first medium, times sine theta 1 equals the index of refraction of the second medium times sine theta 2. Okay, so if you know the index of refraction of air and glass, and you can look those up in a table, and air, of course, is very close to 1. So close to 1, we generally just take it to be 1. And then you know what theta 1 is. Then you can solve for theta 2. So that's often how you use Snell's Law. Predict the angle at which the beam will refract into the second medium using Snell's Law. And again, n1 and n2 are the indices of refraction of the first and second medium media. And don't forget, the angles are measured from the normal. That's the dashed line shown in the picture, the line that's perpendicular to the interface at the point where the beam strikes the interface. OK, so in some rules of thumb, so in the top picture, the top picture is a lot like what we saw in the model of the marching band. The marching band went from the fast medium to the slow medium. And whenever that happens, so whenever light does that, crossing from a fast medium to a slower medium, you get this change of direction, which brings the beam closer to the normal that it started with. Okay. Another way to say that is the light goes from a low index of refraction, that's a fast medium, to a medium with a higher index of refraction. Then we say the light bends toward the normal. And of course, in the opposite case, it goes the other way. So in this case, the light is, starts in medium 1. It encounters medium 2. Some of the light reflects back into medium 1. Some of the light is refracted into medium 2. And in this case, medium 2 is a faster medium than medium 1. So medium 2, therefore, has a lower index of refraction because it's faster. And so here, the light is crossing from a medium with a higher index of refraction, medium 1, to a medium with a lower index of refraction, and you find that the light bends away from the normal in that case. Okay, okay so those are some uh, general points about refraction.